has never hit a grand slam in his career. Deep Jose shot. Valentin can't make the play. Play. Steve Traxel scores. And Cubs would go up 6 nothing after Sosa. 3. RBI in the top of the 7th after Mark Grace at homer. Next man up, it's Henry Rodriguez. He had two home runs in the game. This one off Cal Eldred, who gave up eight runs in four and two-thirds. Rodriguez finished the day with 22 home runs on the year. 8-2 Chicago. Bottom 8, 11-3 Cubs. Marquise Grissom, who went 1-5. for five. The line at a left center. Bob Hamlin and Jeff Cirillo coming to score. Grissom would end up at second, and it's now an 11-5 ball game. 11-8. Two out in the eighth. Rod Beck, the Cubs' fifth pitcher of the inning. In the face, John Jaha is a tying run. Is at the plate with two on, and Beck strikes him out. So it's 11-8 Cubs after eight. Bottom nine. Beck against Jeremy Burnitz. Can't handle the grounder. And look at this uh, hustle by Rod Beck. The earth is moving under his feet, but he got it to first. In time, his 24 save on the year. And Chicago wins it by the final count of 11 to 8. Um, Cardinal land. McGuire homeless so far in July. Top of the third, one nothing Strohs. Jeff Bagwell, who went one for four. This is the one, a solo home run, his 20th on the year. 2 nothing in favor of Houston. Bottom of the fourth now. Still two zip. Brian Jordan on third for Ron Gant at the plate. Look at that. Leave the yard in a hurry. 13th home run of the year for Gant, who went one for four. Ties the game at two. Bottom nine still tied at two. McGuire's on deck. Jose Lima taken out. Not happy about that. Lima's replacement, Doug Henry, walks Ray Lankford on four pitches. Next man up. On ball two to McGuire, Lankford will steal second, his ninth steal of the season. And so now with first base open, the Strohs intentionally walk McGuire. So you have runners in first and second, no out at this point. For Brian Jordan, came in third in the NL and hitting, went one for three. And he grounds into the double play. And the Strohs would get out of the jam. Bottom 11, 3-2 Houston. Royce Clayton at first. Billy Wagner against McGuire. Watch this. Oh, my heavens, did he get a hold of that one. A two-run shot in the bottom of the 11th on an 0-2 pitch. Wins the game. McGuire, two for his last 21. His first homer since June 20th. And he got all of this one. His 38th home run of the year. Griffey tied him last night at 37. McGuire now has 38. And the cards win at 4-3 and 11. Wagner had converted 19 straight save opportunities. Rolando Orojo did earn that distinction. One thing he doesn't do very well is control the inside pitch. Leads the American League with 11, make that 12 hit batters as he hits number 11, Chuck Knobloch. Same inning, Knobloch works his way to second with one out, works off the hit by pitch, facing fellow All-Star Paul O'Neill. O'Neill goes down and gets it, goes with it the other way. Quentin McCracken can't get there. O'Neill will hustle into second. Knobloch gives David Cohn a one to nothing lead. Cohn working fast and really working over McCracken. Not only did he struggle in the field, but with a man aboard in the third. Oh, forget it. McCracken just thought it was going to be the same kind of pitch, decided not to swing at it, and he decided not to even try, hoping that Cone would miss the strikes, only didn't. Eight shutout innings, three hits, eight strikeouts, got in trouble in the night. They handed over to Mariano Rivera, who also inexplicably was not an all-star, facing pinch hitter Bobby Smith. Tying one at the plate, and Rivera gassed him, his 24th save. Cone with Maddox losing tonight, becomes the only 13-game winner in the major league. King of all the land, the finest meat and cheeses for everyone. And an inside pitch. That's Kenneth Maine. And Dan Patrick is gone after that pitch. That was for the sports zone, which you will see later in the show, the ESPN Zone restaurant. And they were serving up those pitches, but Scott Erickson was serving up nothing but empty plates for Nomar Garcia Parra and the Red Sox. Wakefield's knuckler working well, baffling. Jeff Rebele, he struck out five. It's a scoreless game in the fourth when Joe Carter, who was a special guest at the ESPN Zone, visits the bleachers as well. A solo shot is tenth of the year. Orioles up one to nothing. By the seventh, Erickson's got a two to nothing lead, and he continued his dominance. Reggie Jefferson with a ground ball. Diving stop by Rebele, who turns it into an easy out. In the eighth, Erickson has allowed a solo homer to John Ballantin, but convinces Ray Miller to leave him in the game. Darren Lewis, a hard grounder. Rafael Palmero stops it. Erickson wasn't able to complete the game. They go to the last out for Jesse
couple of tight ones to Montreal, and there he is, the new left fielder, Todd Hundley, one of many the Mets have employed this year, and they hope he'll stay there the rest of the season. This ball didn't stay in the park from Carl Pavano to John Olerud, batting second tonight, got him off to a 1-0 lead, then the cleanup hitter. Oh, and Todd we trust. Shea on its feet again, and Todd on a 2-1 pitch. Right center. Gets a little bit of it, bloops it into right field, and he comes back to a standing ovation for a bloop single. Rick Reed in the mound, the all-star pitcher, faces Pavano, and what a grab by Ed Gardo Alfonso, who doubles the man off first base, and Hundley's second at bat, goes to his knees and tries to tear it out of the park. It's hip, but it's not gone. To the warning track, he went one for four in his first game since his AAA days. Piazza came through, though. In a three-all game in the fifth, he goes the other way. Olerud, one of the slowest men in the majors, is going to score. Mets break the tie, utterly loving it, as his presence helps them break the losing streak and set up the fireworks for an eight-to-four win. Reed is now 10-5. and five. Maddox. One of the best fielding pitchers in the history of baseball. Let's loose with one that got away from him. Edgar Renneria gets on with a man aboard, but Walter Weiss feels better than Maddox and makes the force play. Maddox is grateful to get out of that one. Had a 3-1 lead when he pitched in the fourth. Little number goes the other way. Maddox throws it away. Makes two errors in the game. He also did that in the game in April, but last year he made only three errors all of last season. This time it hurts him. Renteria with a seeing eye single up the box. Derek Lee will score in the eighth to tie the game at three. Todd Dunwoody wheels from first to third. Two batters later, Todd Zeal just gets a little wood on it. And that's enough to push Andrew Jones back too deep to get Dunwoody. Marlins take a 4-3 lead and Greg Maddox loses a road game for the first time since his first start of last year. The Marlins pull it out 4-3 over the the Phillies facing the Bucks. Mark Lewis aboard. He'd have three hits in the game. But scoreless in the third. He's aboard. Jason Schmidt well, delivers to Desi Relliford, who crushes one. It's oh, caught by Jose Guillen at the warning track, and he shows off one of the strongest arms in baseball, the double off Lewis. So we're still scoreless. Now we go to the fifth. Jason Schmidt at the plate, and he gets aboard. He had doubled. Now Tony Womack goes the other way. What's Schmidt going to do? He hesitates and says, where's home? Turn left. He's neat. On the relay by Roland from Jeffries, third base coach Joe Jones is filling in and not ably for Jack Lynn, who was at his son's wedding. We're still scoreless. We're in the eighth. Pinch hitter Kevin Jordan hits a bullet off Schmidt. Kevin Sefcik had come in to pinch run for Lewis, understandably. And they win it on the only run of the game, one to nothing. Portugal combines with two relievers, Gomes and Leiter, who picked up. Bumman thinking that Randy Johnson might have finally rediscovered his stuff. Certainly he did against Phil Nevin in the second. Against Nevin again in the fourth. Sits him down, literally. Big Daddy himself goes down. 15 strikeouts in the day for a fired-up Randy Johnson. In the bases-loaded situation, Seattle has not been good this year. Batting under 200, that's worse than the majors. But against knuckler Steve Sparks, Edgar Martinez slaps it in the center. Joey Cora and Ken Griffey score. Mariners build a 2 to nothing lead. Two aboard against Johnson. He blasts one to Salmon, but making a diving stop is the rookie, Shane Monahan, who just came up this week. The Mariners, who tried Russ Davis out in left field last night, may have finally found somebody to play out there. And what the Rangers were up to against the A's. This ball bounces in. The pitch from Aaron Seeley, who's looking to get win 13. Ricky Henderson says, I ain't going nowhere on you. Pudge Rodriguez makes sure. Guns it down there, and Henderson is safe. He's leading the majors in steals, but he went nowhere in the third. In the fourth, base is loaded. Rangers down 2 to nothing, and down and out is Pudge Rodriguez, who was not pleased with the call. But since he has to spend the entire afternoon behind the plate, decides to take it out in the dugout. In the ninth, Mike Fetters in the mound. Ranger, clean up the cups and then get Fetters out there. He's bearded and he's got a bases loaded situation. Luis Salasea will rock one off the wall for a three run double. Luis Salasea, what a time for a Texas hit. Timely as they come. Still in the ninth, two out, one on. Good one at the plate. He lofts one the other way. Here comes Ricky Henderson. He must have forgot to slap it on his thigh. He dropped it. 
The Rangers go on to win it 4-2, to two, and they take over first for the first time since June in the dwindling sun. Facing Oral Hershiser. Bichette, the all-star, crushes one into the left field corner. That's a three-run double as Bonds bobbles it. Rockies took a 5-4 lead. Bichette knocked in four in the night. Giants still within a run, and Bonds, who homered in the All-Star game at the plate, and he's frozen by Mike Munoz, goes 0 for 5 on the night, so Bonds takes a dip while the Rockies... Chavez Ravine for the goodies, top of the first, bases loaded with one out for Wally Joyner, facing Ishmael Valdez, and Joyner grounds to Adrian Beltre, who throws home from third, but he throws wild. Steve Finley and Ken Caminiti score on the air. Padres on top, two love for their All-Star there. Alan Ash, Andy Ashby. Bottom of the first, Dodgers with two on, and Gary Sheffield flies to center field. Steve Finley with the catch. Beltre trying to score from third. Bad decision. Guess what? He's toast. Double play ends the inning. What a bad Bottom of the second, two on Padres. Bobby Bonilla takes a first pitch for a call strike and looked about a foot outside, so he didn't like that. The next pitch, call strike, maybe a little outside again. He and umpire Bill Hahn talk about measurements, weights. Bo gets tossed. The good thing for him, though, he owns a club in Los Angeles, so he's able to get there a little bit early. In the fifth, Tony Gwynn already over two. Hard line to right at Eric Karras. Gwynn in an 0 for 14 slump tie for the longest of his career. In the ninth, Trevor Hoffman comes in for the save against his brother, the manager of the Dodgers. Glenn, Hoffman case Beltre, Raul Mondesi swinging. Eric Karras, this would be another Kodak moment. You take a picture, you study it, and you try again when you get another chance. Andy Ashby tied Atlanta's Tom Glavin and Greg Maddox for the Right. The Diamondbacks signed him to a three-year, $11.5 million deal with hopes that he'd become a leader on their pitching staff. And that's exactly what he's done. Well, sort of. At 3-12, Blair leads the majors in losses and is on pace to become the first 20-game loser since Brian Kingman in 1980. Blair and the D-backs hosting the Reds. Blair looking for his fourth win of the season. Starts the game off facing Reggie Sanders and gets the strikeout. And Jeff Nelson rings the Reds the flash the leather early, bottom of the first. first Danny Klassen sends one up the middle. Barry Larkin, outstanding play. He does. Score. How about that? Tied at zero after one. Top of the eighth, Reds up 2 nothing. And how many times do you see it? A guy makes a great play in the highlights, and next shot, he's at the plate. Big night for Barry Larkin. Three for five, two homers, five ribbies. Reds ahead 4 nothing after that blow. Bottom of the ninth, Mike Remlinger gets Matt Williams for the third time on the night. A complete game shutout as the Reds prevail. Eight zip. The Reds win their sixth in a row. Remlinger's second career shutout comes over seven years after his first, which happened to be in his Major League debut back in 1991. David Ortiz just off the DL. Look at that. 451 feet away. Second longest at the Jake this year. His fifth on the year ties the game at one. Bottom of the second, still tied at one. Pat Borders down the third baseline. Rolling, 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 rolling some more. Hits the bag, fair ball. Now runners on first and second for Kenny Lofton, who went two for three. The bloop to shallow right. Alex Ochoa coming in. Can't make the play. Two runs come in, Fryman and Borders. Lofton thrown out at second, trying to stretch it. Indians up 3-1. Brian Giles just off the DL on Wednesday. In the bottom of the third, his first homer since May 16th. He went four for five, drove in four runs in the game, and he's up 6-1. And Gooden pitched awfully well here. Mar Marty Cordova grounds into the double play as Cleveland wins it 12-2. Gooden going seven innings for the second straight start. He gave up just one run on four hits. He's 2-0 with a 1.73 ERA in his last four starts. Brad Radke gave up eight runs in five-plus innings, got the loss. He's 4-8 in his career now against Cleveland. Blue Jays Tigers, Brian Moeller, the story early. Top of the fourth, Sean Green, ring him up, sit him down. Next man up, Jose Canseco, strikes out. Next man up, Carlos Delgado, down he goes. Top of the fifth, 2 nothing Detroit. Mike Stanley will chop one into the hole. Davy Cruz ranges to his right, great stop, long throw. Moeller had a no-no through six, but would lose it in the seventh. Bottom of the fifth, three nothing Tigers. Bobby Higginson, deep drive. He had two home runs in the game, went three for four. He's now got 23 homers on the year. And Detroit wins at 5-2. Moeller didn't give up a hit through six. Ended up two zip. Men on first and second. Bell, his fourth home run in three games. 22nd on the year. He went two for four. Three run shot. White Sox up 3-2. Top of the fifth. 
James Baldwin facing Manny Lopez strikes Nobody out. out. Lopez strikes out, and then Chad Cooter guns down a stealing Mike Sweeney. Top of the seventh, White Sox up one. Jeff Conine's on first, so he's a tying run. Baldwin will feel the grounder. Curveball chopper, that's trouble. Man, let it go. And watch this. Threw it away. Conine trying to tie the game. Maglia Ordonez a throw developing situation out of the play. White Sox hold on to win 4-3. Baldwin gave up seven hits over seven innings for the win. Pat wrapped the loss, his first road loss of the season after five straight wins away from home.